Folks, we're going to make a start this evening. It's good to see you at the drive-in uh, tonight, and we do welcome each and every one, especially if you're visiting with us. And it's a privilege to be back again preaching the gospel here in Tondraghi. And we pray that the Lord will come and meet with us this evening. We're very glad to have our sister Kirsten with us again tonight. Uh, we had her a few weeks ago when we really enjoyed her singing. And she's going to sing a few pieces this evening as well. And I'm going to give a word of testimony uh, tonight. I'm saved 44 years uh, today, or this evening. I think it was about half nine after the meeting was over. Uh, not tent mission. And we give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his goodness. Now I know I don't look 44. Sure I don't. I only look about 24. <laughs> My wife tells me that anyway. So she does. But it's great to be able to have a testimony, to be able to look back to a day in your life when you were saved by God's grace. We pray that you'll bless, the Lord will bless the testimony tonight. Let's have a wee word of prayer first of all and ask the Lord for his help. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee for all thy mercies to us. We thank thee, Lord, for saving us and keeping us. And oh God, we freely confess, Lord, down through the years many times we have failed thee. But we thank thee, Lord, we can testify tonight that, Lord, you've, you, you haven't failed us. We thank thee, Lord, that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We praise thee, Lord, that your salvation is everlasting and eternal. We thank thee for the Spirit of God that dwells within us. O oh God, we praise thee that his Spirit birth witness with our spirit that we are uh, the sons and daughters of God. We just pray tonight, Lord, that you would come and bless us in this open air service. We thank the Lord for over the summer keeping your hand upon us. We thank the Lord for each one that is gathered week by week. And we pray, Lord, even tonight, that, Lord, as the word of God goes forth, Lord, that you would be pleased to reach down and save some precious soul. And Lord, bless your own people. We thank the Lord for the encouragement that these drive-in services have been to the people of God. And we pray, Lord, that even this night, that the saints of God might be encouraged once again. Undertake for us now, Lord. Come and bless us. Bless Kirsten as she sings. Oh God, we just pray that you'll be unto her all that she needs. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless those lovely hymns to all of our hearts this evening. And we thank God for the precious blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanseth us from all sin. If you have your Bible there in the car with you. Please turn to John's Gospel and the chapter 1. I want to read just some verses, very familiar verses from this chapter of God's Word this evening. John chapter 1, and we'll commence our reading at verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the ninth, the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone. The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael saith unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, 
Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of God. Amen. And we know the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. Again, let me give you a very warm welcome to our drive-in service tonight. And we do thank you sincerely for coming. And we pray that the Lord will bless us indeed as we come to consider his word this evening. Just a few announcements very, very quickly. On Tuesday night, we have our prayer meeting at 8 o'clock, and I'll be here in the will of the Lord to take the prayer meeting, meeting in the main church building at 8 p.m. Then on Thursday night, let me just remind the men again, at 8 o'clock, we're having a committee meeting, and then after that, uh, a session meeting. So do please take note of that, brethren. Friday night, we have the Youth Fellowship, started back last Friday night. And it certainly went very, very well. And we were encouraged with the numbers that came in. And this Friday night, I'll be taking uh, the Youth Fellowship, speaking at the Youth Fellowship meeting at 8 p.m. Remember, next Lord's Day, the Sabbath school and the Bible classes recommence again. Do pray as the children are gathered into the Sunday school. We're going to have open Sunday school for a few weeks to see how things go. So do pray for Mervyn and the teachers as they would seek to Get the boys and girls in under the sound of the gospel. The morning service will be in the main church. And of course the overflow in the church hall. And then next Sunday night the drive in again. Come back again next Sunday evening. I'll be here God willing to preach the gospel. And our sister Grace McClintock will be here to sing next Sunday evening. Now I think that's all the announcements. Now it is a privilege and a great honour for me tonight to stand and give a word of testimony to tell how the Lord saved me by his grace. Sometimes it's hard to know how and where to start a testimony. And sometimes it's hard to know where to end as well. Because we have just so much that we could say of the Lord's goodness and the Lord's mercy. We thank God for saving us 44 years ago tonight. And we look over those 44 years and we just wonder where the time has gone. There's been many ups and downs. And certainly as I give my testimony tonight, I want to emphasize that there's been many times when I have failed the Lord, when I have let the Lord down. But thank God, as I stand in Tandragi this evening, I can truly testify that the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, has never let me down. And even when I failed him, he was always there. And we thank God for the mercy. The Bible tells us that the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. Psalm 118 is my favorite psalm. Indeed, it would be my favorite portion of scripture for many reasons. Throughout my life, the Lord used that psalm on many different occasions to speak to me and to encourage me, even to rebuke me at times. But there's a little phrase in it, and it goes like this, the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. And thank God salvation is forever. It's not just for time, but it's for all of God's eternity. And there's no greater blessing in this world than to know that you're going to heaven. To know and to be assured that when death comes, that it'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And my friend, I just would say at the very start, if you're not saved, that the Lord would speak to your heart this evening and that you would come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as I give my testimony tonight, I want to start by looking back to the year 1940. Nine. Now, I wasn't born then, 
Indeed, it was, wasn't until 13 years later that I would be born. But something wonderful happened in our family circle in 1949. A man by the name of Leonard Ravenhill, an evangelist, an English preacher, came to hold a gospel mission in the Birches. That mission was held in Johnny Maguire's barn. Now that barn is still there, and I think it's still the existing barn where Ravenhill had the mission. Johnny Maguire was an old Methodist. He was a very godly man, him and his wife. They loved the Lord. And they sought to serve the Lord. And indeed, Ravenhill stayed in their house as the mission commenced and went on. But it was at that mission where an uncle of mine was saved. My daddy's brother, Uncle Sammy Gray. And the Lord dealt with his heart. And the Lord saved him in that mission. Now, there were many saved in that mission. My uncle is still living. He's 96 years of age, and we thank God for Uncle Sammy, for he certainly has lived for the Lord down through the years. But I suppose that was the beginning of the Lord working in our recent family circle. And about six months after that, uh, Ravenhill went to Portadown, and he had a mission in Portadown, the following year, and my grandmother, my granny Gray, came to know the Lord. And then 18 months after that, my grandfather got saved. My granda Gray came to know the Lord. So the, the Lord was working in those days in our family circle. And we can trace back the goodness and the mercy of the Lord, humanly speaking, uh, to those days in our family. Now, my grandfather was a very hard man and he was a very heavy drinker and certainly the Lord had to take a great dealing in his life and it was one evening they had been praying for him actually in Clam Mission Hall. The wee hall is still there and it's not used now for a mission hall, it's closed down but my grandmother and a few others, and Johnny McGuire and his wife were uh, there as well, praying for my grandfather. And my grandfather was in the pub and he was drinking heavily. And the Lord was working in his heart and the Spirit of God began to strive with him. And he went up to the barman and he said, I'll never be back in this pub again and I'll never take another drink again. And he walked out of the pub and he walked down the road and he went into the mission hall. They thought that he was going to rack the mission hall or, and order my grand grandmother out but instead he went in and he got down on his knees and he asked the Lord to save him by his grace and what a trophy of grace he was after he was converted to Christ and isn't it wonderful that we can look back to a godly heritage isn't it wonderful for those who prayed for us and I have no doubt that my uncle Sammy and other aunties and uncles who got saved after that and my grandmother and my grandfather, I have no doubt that they prayed for me and all their grandchildren that the Lord would save them and reach down and pluck them as brands from the burning. Now, I wasn't brought up in a Christian home as far as my own mother and father were concerned. My father, that was Uncle Sammy's brother, and of course my grandfather's son, he was a heavy drinker as well. And we had times in our home that wasn't pleasant. And when drinks on the go, then you can imagine what the home would be like. And I can remember coming down the stairs after a weekend of my father drinking, clearing the bottles up. I can remember helping him out of cars when he was stone drunk as a boy, helping my mother to bring him into the home. And... So our immediate family uh, was a sad home in many respects and we really needed the Lord to step in and to save uh, our family, our immediate family at that time. Now, I was saved, as I've said, on the 13th of September, this night, uh, 1976. 
I knew the gospel, although I was, my mother and father weren't saved. I was brought along to Sunday school and heard the gospel. I heard the gospel in faith mission pilgrim children's meetings. I heard the gospel in Scott Street Gospel Hall. I heard the gospel in uh, other missions uh, that the faith, faith mission had. And I had friends who brought me along to those gospel meetings. And I thank God for those people who took an interest in me and brought me under the sound of the gospel and brought me to the, those gospel meetings where I, as a child, could hear the word of the Lord. But it wasn't until 1976 when the Lord saved me. Our church in Portadown and Bethany organized a gospel mission on the Brownstown Road. And that mission went on for some five or six weeks. Dr. Paisley preached at it. The Reverend McRae preached at it. The Reverend Elliot preached at it. There were others who preached the word of God as well. And I can remember being invited along to that gospel mission. A neighbor friend of ours got saved just about a week or two before the mission began. And she started to attend that mission a young woman by the name of Ivy Taylor. And Ivy invited myself and my brother along to the mission. And you know, friend, we were so glad that we went along to that mission. And I can remember that night going into the gospel campaign and listening to the singing and then listening to the preaching under conviction of sin. I had been in the mission that was my second night in the mission when I got saved. I'd been in the mission a few nights before that. And the Lord was really working on my heart and convicting me of my sin. And there was one thing that was stopping me from getting saved, although I was only a boy of 13 years of age. I was always afraid of what my friends would say if I became a Christian, if I got saved. I wonder, is there someone here tonight and... There's something stopping you from coming to Christ. Maybe you're afraid of what others will say. Maybe there's some other reason why you're not saved this evening. And the old devil is so skillful in putting up obstacles before us, seeking to prevent us from coming to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, that was the obstacle that the devil would put up in front of me. I was always afraid of what others would say. What would my mates in school say? What would my friends around Robinson's Town in the Birches say if I give my life to the Lord and became a child of God? But that second night that I went to the mission in Brownstown, Reverend Elliot was preaching. And as he was preaching, he said this, and I'll never forget these words. And of course, the Lord used them to speak to my heart that evening. He said as he was preaching, your friends will laugh you into hell, but they'll never laugh you out. And you know, I'd never heard those words before. I'd never heard that sentence spoken before. And I determined that night, and I, of course it was the Lord giving me the grace and help, but I determined that night that I would not allow my friends to laugh me into hell. You know the strange thing was this. That after I got saved that night. I went back to school. Uh, those that I thought would have laughed at me. They didn't laugh. And these, some of them wished me all the best. My the old devil's a liar. Thank God. The Lord works it all out for his glory. But you know even if they had have laughed. What would it have mattered? Because my friend. The greatest need of my soul that night was to be born again of the Spirit of God and saved by His matchless grace. I wonder, child of God, do you ever think of the people that God uses to bring you to Christ? Now, we know that salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord from start to finish, but He uses means. He uses men and He uses women to point us to Christ. And... When I think of that night when I was saved on the 13th of September, 44 years ago, there were so many people involved. 
in my conversion. I think of Ivy who invited me to the meeting. I think of my grandparents who were praying for me. My uncle Sammy and others uh, of my aunties and uncles who were praying for me. And others who were praying for me as well. I think of the man that drove the minibus, the church minibus that night. Uh, our brother Kenny Lamont. Uh, I think of the man that led me to the Lord after the meeting was over, Brother Jackie Coulter. You know, all of these people played a little part. They were all a link in the chain to bring me to Christ that night. It reminds me of what we were reading there about how Andrew brought Peter to, to the Savior. Now, it was the Lord Jesus that saved Peter. We know that. Because there's, there's, salvation is only found in Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Only Jesus saves. He's the only one who can redeem us for time and for eternity. But as we've already emphasized. The Lord uses means. And he used all of those people. And I'll tell you this. He has been using a lot of other people from the day I was saved until this day. To encourage me. Uh, so many people encouraged me after I was saved. I can remember that night after I came to Christ, about half nine uh, in the evening, and I was going home in the minibus. And you know, friend, for the first time, I had no fear of hell. For the first time, I had the assurance of God's salvation. Now, there was going to be battles, and there was going to be difficulties, and even going to be doubts, but that night, Everything seemed to be different. And I went home that evening and I had the assurance of God's wonderful salvation in my heart and life. I knew I was saved just by simple childlike faith. Now, I wasn't a great student at school. I just hated school. And I was, I was, I was off school more than I was there at school before I was saved. And I'll tell you this, I wasn't sitting at home because my mother didn't know anything about it. And when I left school, I didn't leave with a great education. But friend, that night, 13, year, 13 years of age, couldn't have quoted you hardly two, quote, two verses out of the Bible. That night when I called upon the Lord, when I knelt at that old form at at, at the, the, the front of that tent and called upon God to save me. I meant it. And you know, he saved me. He redeemed me for time and for eternity. And I can remember going home in the minibus that evening. And I can remember going into the house. My father wasn't there. He was out drinking somewhere. And I told my mother, I said, Mommy, I've got saved tonight. And I'll never forget what she said. She says, that's good, son. That's good, son. And I went up to my bedroom and I got down on my knees and I thanked God that night for saving me. Oh, child of God, isn't it wonderful tonight to be able to read our titles clear to mansions in the sky? Isn't it wonderful to know that our sins are forgiven? You know, I was just an old, old sinner. You said to me, but you were saved at 13. What, what badness could you have got up to? Well, I wouldn't even begin to tell you the badness that a 13-year-old young person can get up to. My friend, I needed to be saved. I needed my sins forgiven. But oh, the joy and the peace that filled my heart that day. And I lift up my heart tonight and I thank God and I praise him for redeeming me and saving me for time and for eternity. And you know, friend, that joy, that joy hasn't gone away. Praise God, I can say it tonight, although saved 44 years, that the joy of the Lord is still my strength. And I can lift up my heart and I can praise the Lord for what he has done, not for what I have done or what anyone else has done for that matter, but for what he has done in my life. And you know, friend, what he has done for me, he can do for you. Oh, he can do for you tonight. I don't care what your sin is. I don't care how far down the road of iniquity you've traveled. The Lord Jesus can save you if he can save my uncle Sammy, if he can save my grandfather, if he can save my grandmother, if he can save my father. Ten years after I was saved, he saved my father. And what a testimony 
he had. But you know, the Lord tonight can save you as well. I wonder, is there someone here this evening? You're still a stranger to grace and to God. And maybe the Lord has been working in your heart. Oh, my friend, the Lord is able to save to the uttermost all that come to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. That night when I went home and I went up to my bedroom, two things happened. Two things happened. Well, three things happened. First of all, I was saved and on my way to heaven. But you know, the Lord gave me a desire to pray. And not only did the Lord give me a desire to pray, but the Lord gave me a desire to serve him. And I started to pray for my family. Now, I was the first one in the immediate family to get saved. I had two brothers and two sisters, my mommy and daddy. And none of them were saved. I was the first one saved in the home. And I started to pray for them. And shortly after I got saved, my sister got saved in a mission. Then a brother got saved. Then another sister got saved. Then my father got saved. Then another brother got saved. And I could stop here and I could tell you how the Lord miraculously stepped into each of their lives. and Redeemed them for time and for eternity. Now I'm still praying. Praying for my mother. Still praying. Praying for my grandchildren. Still praying. Praying for aunties and uncles and cousins who are still unsaved. And as we were saying this morning in the church, child of God, we need another intervention of God. We need another intervention of God. Why am I saved tonight? Because God intervened. Why did God save my grandparents and my father and so many of my family? Because God intervened. Salvation is God intervening in the sinner's life. And you know, as we said this morning in the church, we can church our children and our grandchildren. We can catechize them. We can teach them the word of God. We can pray for them. And all these things are needful and must be done. But you and I know, child of God, that unless God the Holy Spirit takes a dealing in their heart and their life, then they'll never be saved. Oh, that God would send us again a breath of revival. That mission that Ravenhill had at the Birches in 1949, it started with a few people. There was hundreds going to it before it was over. There were many saved. That mission I was saved in, there was over a hundred people saved at that Brownstown mission. Oh, we're so satisfied today. And I can say the same for myself at times. We're satisfied just because we see a crowd of people coming. Just because we see an odd one or two unsaved coming to meetings. That sort of excites us now. But oh, in those days, those people getting saved every week, 10 and 20, sometimes 30 people walking the aisles, coming down to seek the Lord for salvation. Oh, that those days would come again. That the Lord would move by his gracious Holy Spirit. We do not despise that they have small things. And we thank the Lord for his mercies. Even the raindrops. But oh that the Lord would come. And that the Lord would send us again showers of blessing. The Lord has blessed us in so many ways from that day till now. And I'm not going to take the time tonight to, how, to tell you how the Lord has led us in so many different ways. He directed us in who to marry. He directed us in which church to go to. He directed us when he called us to preach the gospel. He directed us to where we were to preach the gospel. Oh, we thank God. Not only does he save, and not only does he keep, but he leads and he guides. Oh, I would say, young people tonight, give your life to the Lord. If you're saved, give your life completely over to him and let him take your life and use it. And he will. He will lead you in every avenue of your life and he will guide you through his precious precious word and i pray this evening if you're found here without the savior that you would come and put your faith and trust in the lamb of god which taketh away the sins 
of the world. Oh, my friend, there's no, there's no blessing like God's salvation. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that God's salvation is the greatest blessing that any man can have. And tonight, I pray that each one here can truly testify, can truly look back to that day when they were born again of the Spirit of God. Going to church is not enough. Being good living is not enough. Being brought up in the church is not enough. Ye must be born again. The hymn writer penned it well when he wrote those words. Ye must be born again or never enter heaven. Tis only blood-washed ones are there. The ransomed unforgiven. My friend, that's the truth of God's precious word. You see, there, there's no back doors into heaven. There's no back doors into heaven. Christ is the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And thank God tonight, if you were but to come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, just like I did, as a boy of 13 years of age, he would save you and he would give you everlasting life and he would give you the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I pray that the Lord will bless these few words of testimony tonight. And I pray if you're not saved, that you will come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And if you are saved, give your life to him. Listen, I have no regrets serving the Lord. I have no regrets giving my life to him. I have no regrets stepping out in full-time service, none at all. Praise God, I would rather serve the king than be out of the will of God. Oh, young person, don't be out of the will of God. Seek the will of God for your life and do the will of God in your life. And then when you come to die, as we all must do, we will hear that well done, thy good and faithful servant. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee this evening for all thy mercy and goodness to us. We thank thee, Lord, for saving us. Oh, Lord, there's so much more we could say tonight. Lord, it's only half the story. But we thank thee, Lord, for godly grandparents, godly aunties and uncles who prayed for us. We thank thee, Lord, for all thy mercy and those who led us and brought us to that gospel mission that night where we heard the gospel and were saved by God's grace. We thank thee for the preaching of Ken Elliot. We thank thee, Lord, and praise thee for hearing thy word, coming to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, remember those here tonight who are still strangers to grace and to God. And Lord, if there's others, Lord, here tonight who are halting between two opinions. We pray, Lord, that you would draw them lovingly and eternally to the cross. So undertake for us now. Separate us in thy love. We thank thee for your presence tonight. And we thank thee, Lord, that you're still in the soul-saving business, that you're still able to save to the uttermost all that come to thee. We thank thee for that, Lord. And we pray for revival. We pray for an intervention of God again in our lives and in our families and in our churches, and in our land. Oh God, come again by your mighty power. And we'll be very careful to give to thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless you folks, and safe home. <laughs>